DaVinci Resolve 20 just dropped with some pretty insane AI features, but how many of them are actually worth it? I tested every single AI feature. Some of them, pretty freaking great. Some of them, nah. I'm gonna give you a list of my favorite new AI features introduced with DaVinci Resolve 20. Up first, we have IntelliScript. IntelliScript is basically the text-based editing that Premiere has put into place, but DaVinci didn't have one yet. So that's why I believe this is such an amazing update because DaVinci users get to now have this text-based editing that was all the rave over on Premiere. Here's how it works. When you upload your media to your media pool, you right click on it. And when you right click on it, you get the option through AI tools to do an audio transcription. Now what it's gonna do is it's going to initialize, it's going to, the AI is going to observe and read the qualities and the details within your footage. And basically what it's gonna do is it's going to lay out a transcript so that you can see all the words that have been spoken within that video clip or that audio clip. And what you're gonna be able to do once you click this little timeline key up here to the left. Now, basically you can select the sections you wanna delete um, by selecting it and hitting delete. There you go. But it is fairly simple from the media pool, throwing the AI transcription up and editing via the transcription. And you can see the timeline as you delete certain sections, you will be able to see those sections deleted and manipulated within the timeline. Pretty cool if you haven't used it yet. So number two, you're going to bring your audio into the Fairlight tab, which before this update, I've never touched the Fairlight tab. Didn't even know it existed. Didn't know it was meant for audio. But now I'm gonna use it because what the audio assistant does is you drag your audio into the Fairlight tab, into one of the tracks, you go to AI tools, AI audio assistant, and then it gives you a delivery standard. So basically you have the standard for Netflix, YouTube, Disney. It gives you all of these different options. It's such a small change, but it's one of those intentional changes that most people won't notice, but how they receive the audio is going to be much better. Number three, we have voice convert, which this is just freaking cool. If for some reason I didn't want to sound like this and I wanted to sound like this, all I have to do is go into DaVinci Resolve. Throw my audio clip into the editor tab. And when I right click on it, I have the option that says voice convert. I'm gonna hit voice convert. And from there, it gives me a couple of voice models. Uh, so female one, female two, male one, male two. And I just used it on this interview clip that we got uh, recently because this guy had like a deep Southern voice. So I thought it'd be really funny to put a female voice on him. Um, and this is what it sounded like. First of all, don't believe everything Dylan says about me, but Dylan has been awesome. In fact, Dylan is probably... Now, why would you use voice convert? Um, if you want to do voiceovers where you're the only one that's able to speak, it doesn't necessarily have to be video and audio syncing up. It can be a voiceover that you don't have anyone else but yourself, and you don't have the option to use AI voiceover tools, text to audio. But if you want to explain or you want to read the script yourself and then change how your voice sounds, they recorded a bunch of professional voiceover artists and they made it so that it'll sound like them, but it'll take your same emphasis, your same emotion to make it match your delivery. Up next, number four, we have Beat Detector, which Beat Detector is something that I didn't know I needed until I realized how much time I waste without the capabilities of the AI Beat Detector. So what it basically does is it'll find the rhythmic beats within your song and it'll actually give you an option to be able to snap to those beats visually. So if you want to drag your clips forward or back and you want to cut on the beats, it'll give you a more apparent marker for where that beat is. Now, they say it is best used for like pop or hip hop music. So if you start getting like classical with it and there's no percussion or no beats in it. I don't know if it'll be able to match it real well, but whenever you start using the lo-fi sound or any of the modern sounds, Beat Detector will give you markers showing where the rhythmic beat is. Whether you think it is gonna save you a lot of time or not, whenever you are doing this often, it's going to save you time. And the best part is it doesn't cut on like the apparent beat. It gives you the markers for the rhythm. 
So there's some times where you could make a cut that isn't on like the strong drum beat that you didn't even know was a comfortable cut because there was no strong bass there when in reality it's still on rhythm. It just unlocks a new idea of cutting on the beat, if that makes any sense. How you do this is you drag your audio into the edit tab, you right click and at the very bottom, it says show music beats. So when you click that, it'll load and then up pops all of the markers for the rhythm that music is following. Number five, we have the AI music editor. Now what this does is say you have a three minute score, three minute song, and you are editing a 30 second commercial promo, social media piece of content. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into the editor tab, throw your music in there, go to the inspector tab within the editor page, go find AI music editor, turn it on, and then basically you are going to type in how long you want the song to be. And once you type that in, it'll give you at least two versions, maybe three, maybe four. And basically it's going to cut, sync, and warp the music so that it is smoothly transitioning without you having to do any of the work. The only problem I was running into, which if any of you know a solution, if there's a song where it's like really slow at one part and really intense at the other, and then I wanted to shrink it, basically it was taking only the beginning portions and it wouldn't include any of those latter portions of the song. And I wanted some of it. So I tried doing things where I made the initial song shorter so that it was starting later and ending earlier. So we got a little mix of both levels. And then I did the AI music editor, but it still took favor over the beginning half. So if any of y'all have any ideas for that, let me know. Up next, this tool is pretty friggin' wild. If you were to upload a video into your editor page, videos specifically that are low res, so you get a 480 clip, a 720 clip. Maybe there's somebody who reached out asking if you could edit footage and it's someone who doesn't really film that much. So you get a job from Uncle Joe who's sending you 480 footage off of his flip phone saying, hey, I'll pay for you to edit. For some reason, if he's willing to pay the price for you to edit this, obviously you want to make it look good. And as long as that 480 look isn't the style, if you're trying to bring it up, there's a super scale option, which super scale is basically going to take your footage and increase the resolution 2x, 3x, 4x. So how you're gonna do this is you're gonna bring in your visuals, go to the edit page, go to the inspector tab, and then under video, you will see AI super scale. When you turn that on, you'll have a couple of options, 2x, 2x enhanced, and then you can go 3x, 4x. This works fairly well. Now, obviously it's not the same as getting 4K footage natively, but for the average viewer, especially for social media content, this is crazy and you don't have to pay extra for it. This is just included in DaVinci. The next one, number seven, it's not out yet, but I am so excited for the AI set extender. If you don't know what this is, think about Photoshop generative AI. How if you wanted to extend a photo or how most of us have been doing, if you want to extend a video, so you have a horizontal static clip without any of your subject crossing outside of frame, you can expand it and basically take that screenshot of the ex expanded frame as a still and then composite it onto your footage with some grain and color grading. You'd never know that that's just a still image on top of your video. But that becomes very difficult when you have moving shots and DaVinci Resolve is going to solve this for us. So basically what they're going to do is you can do the same process, but you don't have to take it into Photoshop or you can just do set extender, take your video and you can extend the set and you can be doing any type of camera movements and DaVinci's AI software will study and understand the details of your shot and expand your shot, combining it to your frame you've already created. Hope that makes sense because that is, I'm okay. I'm okay if we have to wait for that. I'm okay, because that's going to be amazing. Worth the wait. Up next, we have AI Ultra Noise Reduction. So basically how this works, it's included in a node on your color management page that already exists, an effect. What you're going to do is whenever you go to color grade your footage, 
within your desired node, you're gonna go to effects, look up noise reduction. You'll have a couple different options. What you do is you go to spatial noise reduction. You go there and then it gives you this drop down and on the drop down you are going to do ultra noise reduction and then from there you'll hit analyze it'll give you this little box and you can choose what area you want the ai to focus on that is going to use as an example as to how much noise reduction it's going to put forward so depending on if you want your image to be very clean, you're gonna to go to the darkest part or the most noisy part of your image, use that as that reference within that frame, and then it is going to use those parameters for your entire image. Now, if you just want like slight noise reduction, go to an area that you want to look the cleanest. So say like the skin tones, it doesn't have a lot of noise, but you want that to look the cleanest, you'd use that, and then it would do a little bit less. This is amazing. I've used it a couple times. Now, obviously, just like everything, you can go overboard and make it look Disney really quick um, but that's gonna be a tool that again with all these tools these are the base offers they just created these there's always updates happening to everything within these editing softwares these are right out of the gate you should be looking at these as like these should suck and they don't it's crazy now my last favorite AI tool which stay until the next one, because I have two bonus tools that aren't AI, but I'm so glad that they were released within DaVinci Resolve 20. But the last one is Magic Mask V2. If you've not used Magic Mask, it basically is a godsend. I'm just kidding. Kind of. No, I'm not. Well, okay. Magic Mask is basically where you select your subject or select the object you want to mask, and the AI is going to determine the mask. And Magic Mask V1, unless you were using footage that was crazy movement or crazy noisy, if it was like interview style or it was just, it was good. It was solid. Now V2 is crazy solid. Like I said, they're constantly updating. I didn't know it could get better. And it just did. Now you can have that fast moving footage. Now you can have that noisy footage select your subject and your subject will be mapped out via an AI neural engine that is going to study and determine your footage to know exactly where your subject is within the frame. So how I use this is I actually go into my color page as I and I go to the magic mask tab down here and from there I select exactly what I want to mask out. I hit this little gray out tool so I can see what is being selected and then I hit these arrows in either direction and it is going to use AI to create the mask along that entire clip. From there you can color grade this mask specifically or you can create an outside layer and in this node you can affect and color grade everything that is outside of that selected mask. It's crazy. I don't, I mean, <sighs> Da Vinci, I want to like. <sighs> What happens when everyone pays for this? They've got they've got some other stuff somewhere. Oh, cloud and all that, but I just had a discussion with myself, sorry. So now we've made it to the bonus tools. These are great. Oh my gosh, let me tell you about it. And I'm going to. So obviously I'm a big fan of color grading. We have two new tools. The chroma color warp is up first. Remember that? In this past video, I was talking about a color web because I never called it the color warp. I called it the color web because it looked like a web. Basically, you got to select a certain hue of your image. And from there, you could manipulate that. But not only are you manipulating that color within itself, it also slightly manipulates the rest of the colors so that you're not getting some harsh artifacts or distortions instead it is warping all the colors with it to kind of give that smooth transition the chroma color warp is like the color web color warp but more fine-tuned now you're basically just getting a more fine-tuned way to manipulate those colors and you do it by going into your color warp tab and then going to chroma color warp you can either select your point on the actual map or you can go to your frame put on the qualifier and select the part within your frame that you want to start manipulating and then from there you drag your second point and that is basically saying we are transitioning this color to this hue and saturation now you can change how much of that map is being affected so you can make it a lot larger and you'll affect a lot more of that image 
But basically when you combine this with the color web, color warp, you can manipulate skin tone specific colors at such a smooth rate that there is no artifact. It's beautiful. It's, ah, it's so good. And lastly, lastly, I used to use three different nodes to get a look that one node is now going to get me. Halation, film grain, film damage. Those three are now in one node called the film look creator. Within the film look creator, which is an effect within your color page, you basically have the opportunity to manipulate grain, color, exposure. You're basically going to input a default or a uh, preset to a kind of look that you want, 65 millimeter film look, 35 millimeter. And it's going to give you that preset. And then from there, you can go in and refine and fine tune exactly what you want. You're basically going to be able to do an entire color grade within this node that has the sole purpose of giving you a film look. Now, obviously when it comes to exposure and when it comes to the grade itself, I shy away from that because I still want to use the other tools within DaVinci to get that done. But the grain, the halation, the blooming effects, it's all can be, it all can be done within DaVinci now. One node. Now there are a ton of more AI tools that DaVinci has released with DaVinci Resolve 20 that I'm going to be making more videos deep diving into these topics. But I just wanted to push this initial video out just to let everyone know, hey, this may be your option. If you have not gone to DaVinci Resolve yet, just do the free one. Just try out the free one. I mean, can y'all put in the comments, am I crazy? Is DaVinci Resolve like not as good as it seems? No. No, it is. It is. You can't tell me otherwise. DaVinci Resolve is great. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Well, hope y'all enjoyed the video. Remember, it only takes one to create your first video. It only takes one to try out DaVinci Resolve. It only takes one to make a change. It only takes one to change the world. And that could be you. See you next time.